Hello folks, it's Michael Beverly. Welcome to my channel. It's 2024. And I still can't. Oh, I am I am upgrading my studio soon, so I won't have to wear this ridiculous headset and have terrible sound. And I'm gonna have better lighting and a better camera. Anyways, this is Truth Spotting Thursdays, where I point out apologist lies this week on this episode, we will be looking at J.P. Moreland's How Darwinisms Are All... Darwinisms are all. Now, first of all, I don't know that anyone goes around calling themselves a Darwinist. You end up with particles that aren't conscious. Does that make sense? An electron doesn't have consciousness. Are we comfortable with that? Um, and this video is, is... I don't know. It's like 8 to 10 years ago, but it it's going to prove a point. Point number one... JP has changed his mind, and in this thing, he gives some allowance for where he might be forced to change his mind again. And he says, well, I'll just have to tweak my Genesis belief just a little bit to incorporate if this new belief, if, new, if more evident, <laughs> as if we need more evidence for evolution. But the reason I thought I would do this is because I am continually getting comments about how there, you know, there has to be a creator. Okay, so look, I'm just another human, and I'm just as much of an idiot as everybody else. I could be completely wrong. There might your God might be the real God. There might be a supercomputer that created us, and we live in a simulation. There might be, surprise, surprise, the Muslims are right or the Mormons are right, and we'll find out after we die. All of those things are somewhere in the probability light cone, and it. Some of these ideas are trillions to one against, and some of them are more likely than others. Now, that being said, I'm like 99% plus on materialism, and I listen to Sean Carroll and guys like him on quantum physics, and and I think the naturalistic world is is very probable, like on naturalism and materialism. Like, okay. The difference when I listen to guys like JP Moreland and other apologists is they can't steal man often it sounds like they don't even understand the other side and they make absolutely ludicrous statements today's guest speaker very rarely do we get to have a speaker on the kind of caliber that we have today because i would say that in a in a generation where the, where the media and the masses were calling for god's death wait what the media is calling for god's death I thought Jesus died on the cross 2,000 years ago. There's a big confusion out there between people that don't believe in God and people calling for God's death. Now, who's ever out there calling for God's death, stop. That's just mean. You're going to hurt his feelings. And calling for God's resignation. There was a group of godly men and women in this generation that stood up and not only defended the honor of God, but also gave me and you reasons to believe in our faith just besides that's what we've always done. So he's admitting straight up, with no irony, that they believe for no reason it was just because that's what they had always done. And thank God for J.P. Moreland to come along and reassure us and handhold us that it, that it that it's all true the shit you already totally believe what can i ask you can we be honest here folks what's the fucking point you already believe it you don't care about actually determining truth rationally and unbiasedly as you've admitted you've always believed it but also gave me and you reasons to believe in our faith just besides that's what we've always done. That's what we've always done. That's what we've always done. It's just J.P. Moreland came along to defend the honor of God and to reassure you that everything that your mommy and daddy told you was true. <laughs> That's what we've always done. Mommy, we have a good mommy and daddy. They told us the true stuff. Well, not the, the stuff about Shanna was just for fun. But the Jesus stuff was totally true. Every last thing. Jesus. You see how fucking pathetic that is? 
And I'm sorry, but this stuff makes me mad because if you guys were intellectually honest, you would admit this stuff and you wouldn't be proud. You would be ashamed of it. You would be ashamed to go on stage in front of a crowd and say, oh, we have an apologist here to tell us that everything that we were indoctrinated and brainwashed with as children is all true. You would be ashamed of that. It would be shameful. Because you want to know the truth? If all the stuff that you were indoctrinated and brainwashed with happened to be true, that would just be a lucky coincidence. Because you didn't come to that knowledge through means of reason and intellectual honesty. You believed it because you were told as kids. And you were emotionally invested. And you're admitting right off the bat that everything that JP says is not to seek truth. It's to reassure any, it's to massage you and give you good, warm, and fuzzy feelings. Because I can tell you this right now, because I've listened to this thing as I'm going through and responding to it. I've already listened to it once. Well, not all of it, but most of it. And I've heard, I've heard the same shit from, from a thousand other apologists. That's an exaggeration, but you know my point. I've heard it all before. You, JP isn't going to be giving you the means to know what's true. He's not going to steel man the other side. He's not going to angel man the other side. He's not going to be fair. Now, there is, in my opinion, not a shred of evidence for this thesis. Not a shred of evidence for this thesis. Not a shred of evidence. Not a shred of evidence. And the reason I'm doing this video in my series, Truth Spotting Thursdays, is because JP is going to lie. And that's the disgusting part. I could be wrong, but at least I read and understand both sides. At least I care about truth enough to say I could be wrong and I want to really understand the major arguments and the major ideas behind the, the, you know, the most prominent theories and ideas and philosophies. Like, I don't have a lot of time to spend with the people that believe that reptilian aliens live in the center of the earth and they, that they rule the world just because. I just don't have time for that. <sighs> Can we be real here, people? You guys are sheep. You're sheep. You should be ashamed. Go and read. If you care about truth. Now, the, if you don't care about truth and you're happy to say Hey, I'm just lucky that my parents, I was birthed to the right parents and the right beliefs. Like that guy just said, hey, carry on. But why do you need to listen? Why do you need JP or any other apologist to, to, to reassure you? Isn't the Holy Spirit enough? Like you got the God of the universe and you're in a personal love relationship with God. Why do you need? J.P. Moreland or William Lane Craig or Frank Turek or any of the other apologists to reassure you. <laughs> yeah, do you know how ridiculous that is? Oh, my God. Oh, yes. Jesus loves me. I'm in a relation. I have a personal relationship with the creator of the universe, and I know it's true. Oh, but I'm going to spend hours listening to William Lane Craig to explain to me why I can feel confident. Aren't you confident already? <laughs> Obviously, no. Well, if you really care about truth, friends, you can't just listen to apologists. Now, I'm not saying don't listen to them. In fact, I, you should listen to them because they're so silly. When you when you actually hear somebody that's intellectually honest speak and you compare it to a, a complete brain dead idiot like J.P. Moreland, you, you, the light bulb goes on your head. You go, oh, my God, I can't believe I listened to somebody that was that stupid and that dishonest. That's my... That's my real fault. My my real complaint with J.P. Moreland isn't that he's stupid. Like, you know, stupid people are just, you know, sorry. They just, you know, they didn't have any choice in the matter, I don't think. But dishonest people, they piss me off. Um, he is a professor emeritus at my alma mater, Talbot Theological Seminary. Everybody, please stand to your feet and help me welcome Dr. J.P. Moreland. All right, folks, let's get into the meat of this. I'm going to cut out a lot of what he talks about because it's just not a, it's just not germane. Uh, I will put a link to the, to the, it's really a sermon. I don't even want to call it a speech. 
I'll put a link if you want to know more. I am going to do my very best to make sure it's clear I'm not taking them out of context. I think the statements that I'll present stand for themselves. The real problem, however, with evolutionary theory is not that it touches on whether or not there's a God. The real problem with evolutionary theory is it tends to undermine some very plausible ways of interpreting the, the early chapters of the book of Genesis. And this is why the Ken Ham, IG, and Discovery Institute guys have this battleground they just can't give up. Evolution is true. Deal with it. That what the Bible says is a non sequitur to doing science. And if you can't agree on that, then you're just saying you don't want to do science. You want to do religion, which is fine if that's what you want to do. But you, you might as well posit that the whole world was made by Mickey Mouse. Like you can say that it might be true. But it has no bearing on an actual real discussion about science. So talking about evolution and then injecting Genesis is just silly. Just stop. If you want to talk about evolution, then what Genesis says is a complete non sequitur. Even if it was true, even if Genesis is true, even if God exists and he made the world, these are non sequiturs to the science of evolution. That's why there are plenty of evangelicals that not only accept evolution, there's evangelicals that are like paleoevolutionists or paleontologists or any other ologists. Catch up, dudes. We're in 2024. We're not in 1802. Come up with a picture of origins that looks remarkably like Jesus' parables of the kingdom. Some seeds go to waste, others bear remarkable fruit. Some projects start tiny and take forever, but ultimately produce a great crop. Some false starts are wonderfully rescued, others are forgotten. Chaos is astonishingly overcome. This says nothing about generosity, since that word only makes sense in terms of a personal creator, which the Epicureans, like Erasmus Darwin, Charles's grandfather, had ruled out. Now, is evolution true? Well, that depends on what you mean by it. Well, this is either a lie or a complete non sequitur. That's like saying, do elephants exist? Well, it depends on what you mean by the word elephant. Hmm. Maybe you mean by elephant a reptilian alien that lives in the center of the earth that rules the planet. And if that's your definition of elephant, then... No, it, elephants don't exist. Come on, JP. You barely started your lecture and you're already throwing out word salads, non sequiturs, and bullshit. Evolution is true. It's one of the most firmly established facts in science. It's agreed on by everybody except religious fundamentalists as being true. Now, does that mean that it's absolutely certainly true, like in complete absoluteness? Well, no, because as scientists and Bayesians like to say, nothing is that true because it, 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 like if the probability of something, uh, if, the, if you're positing that the probability is one, it gives you no room if you're wrong. But don't take that as being it's not a solid fact. It is. It's, it's as solid as a fact of anything in science. Now, are there aspects of evolution that are still debated and argued about why? Of course, because it's so complex and covers so many things. All right. What is evolution? <laughs> well, it can mean one of three things. First of all, it can mean that organisms change when they go to new environments. Organisms change when they go to new environments. This is true. If you take a group of brown rabbits, and if they migrate to an area where there's a lot of snow, it could be after several generations, their, their coats turn white rather than brown, and that enables them to survive better. Is that definition of evolution true? Yes, and nobody disputes it. Yeah, nobody disputes it today, JP, because you sound like a complete 
moron even to your fundamentalist friends. But what about Christians two or three or hundred years ago? This is this is this this is one of the subtle ways Christians lie is they act like after they've caught up to stuff they can't you know like the sun the sun used to go around planet earth in christian views and christians christians stood on the idea that the earth was standing still and the sun was going around it to the point of mocking and persecuting and calling heretics people that said eventually it became so obvious that the earth goes around the sun that christians go oh well, we we knew that all along. Come on, it's obvious. So JP JP is misrepresenting reality. Come on, JP. If you were if you were telling this story 400 years ago, the church would have burned you at the stake. Animals don't change. God made them perfectly how they needed to be. Heretic. That's called microevolution. The second meaning of evolution is called the thesis of common descent. Now, this is the idea that living things appear on earth in a sequence of simpler life to more complex life in a sequence of new life forms all the way from single-celled organisms, simple life, supposedly, up to human beings. That's called the thesis of common descent. That is what is represented on the board here. We see a sequence of changes from chimpanzees up to human beings. All right. As I've been saying, J.P. Moreland is an idiot. Human beings did not evolve from chimpanzees. We share a common ancestor. Now, I'm not a, I'm, I'm not a scientist, but I can do a quick Google search and see the, the general idea is somewhere between four to nine million years ago chimpanzees, you know, modern chimpanzees and humans branched off from a common ancestor. Now, so we we didn't evolve from chimpanzees, JP. Like at least if, if at least be honest if, if you're trying to if you're trying to show the other guys an idiot, at least at least get at least get your facts straight. I mean, the facts about how the the idiots are wrong. Like you idiot evolutions are wrong. You, you idiot evolutionists are wrong. Human beings were not did not evolve from from carrots uh, a million years ago, obviously. But guess what, people? We share similar genes with like fucking pretty much everything on the planet that's alive. Like I don't know if it I don't know if it's everything. I'll just take a stab at it. I bet you we share some common genetics with carrots i don't know let me go ask chat gpt now all of the evidence for evolution so hear me hear me say this all of the evidence for evolution is evidence for this thesis yeah okay i'm no expert but i was curious this is what chat gpt says However, it's broadly understood that all eukaryotes, organisms whose cells have a nucleus enclosing their genetic material, share a significant portion of their DNA as they all evolve from a common ancestor. This includes both humans and carrots. In general, it's commonly cited that humans share about 50% of their genes with plants, so this figure can vary based on the criteria used for comparison. At the end of the day, all living things. Now, you you can probably argue. I mean, I think there is some argument, like whether viruses are actually living beings or not. That's another topic. But like, we have common ancestors, JP. This is like established, undeniable science. The argument about this is over. Arguing anything other than this is to be a flat earther who believes the Earth is flat, stable, and that the sun orbits the Earth. There is no evidence for the third thesis I'm about to tell you. So all of the evidence for evolution is evidence for the thesis of common descent. Well, is the thesis of common descent true? I'm inclined to say no, but... 
because you're either a fucking idiot who hasn't bothered to study anything and you're just mouthing off nonsense that you know nothing about, or you're a liar. Those are the only two options here. Because if you're inclined to say anything other than what's obvious and that we have insurmountable evidence for, then you're a liar or you're stupid. Like, those are the t only two options. Just admit it. If you're listening to somebody like JP, just recognize he's a he's an ideologue who does not care about actual evidence. Let me say very clearly that if the thesis of common descent turned out to be true, I would have very little problem with it as an evangelical believer because I think that the early chapters of Genesis teach us that life appeared on earth by and large through a sequence of events from simple to more complex. So if the thesis of common descent was true, which I don't believe it is, but even if it were, it would cause my Christian faith very little adjustment because I am committed to the idea, according to Genesis, that living things appeared on earth by and large from simple to complex. I would have to tweak my understanding of Genesis a little bit but it wouldn't be that big a deal. So, while I do not believe the thesis of common descent... Because you're a brain-dead idiot, but I like how you realize this situation is very similar to saying the sun obviously goes around the earth, and the Bible, can, and the Bible says so. Galileo. You see, JP knows... He knows that the evidence might become so overwhelming that he's going to have to walk back his declaration. So that's why he's, he's, he's giving this whole disclaimer. Actually, I'm going to correct myself here. The evidence already is overwhelming, but the problem is most American Christians are scientifically illiterate. So people like JP can continue to lie to them and not get called out on it. He used to be a young earther, and that's sent from another video. I'm not going to get that clip, but uh, I think he said he changed his mind in the 80s. Why? Because the evidence of an old earth was so obvious and so overwhelming that you, have, that you simply have to accept it, or you have to postulate that God's a trickster God, and JP didn't want to make that step. So he's like, oh, I was wrong. The earth isn't 6,000 years old. My bad. It is not wildly inconsistent with biblical Christianity, and the two can be harmonized fairly easily. Again, JP lies straight up. Now, you know, JP, I don't know if he's an Old Testament scholar, but he's a philosophy professor and a, a Christian apologist. And it's hard for me to imagine he hasn't actually read Genesis since he's talking about it. Now, when I was a Christian, I didn't realize there were two accounts of creation in Genesis. I just read, I always read these the same way you probably read them if you're a Christian. Or I, like, I don't really stop and think about it. So in Genesis 1 up to, up to Genesis 2 verse 3, the following happens. On the third day, plants are created before humans and animals. However, in Genesis 2 verse 4 through verses uh, 2, 25, Genesis, okay, the creation of Adam, specifically for the Garden of Eden. So, so in that account, Adam's created first, right? And then, and then the sea creatures and the birds in the in the early in the first creation account, the sea creatures and birds are created on the fifth day, and land animals on the sixth day before humans. So the whole thing where JP says, well, the creation account in Genesis is like from simple to more complex. He's lying. Um, and then, so in the, in the, in the second account, the, the animals are created after Adam to find a suitable helper for Adam. And then Eve is created from Adam's, from Adam's ribs, because like the animals, they didn't find a suitable helper among the animals. So then Eve's created. Aha, but go back to the, er, the first creation account on the sixth day, male and female are created at the same time after all the other forms of life. So when JP says the com the complexity goes from simple to up to humans in Genesis, it, well, no. 
I mean, in that one, in that account, but there's a conflicting account. And also the sea creatures and birds on the fifth day and land animals on the sixth day would mean that birds were created with birds are obviously more complex than say, you know, bugs. So, but the, the creatures on the land are created on the sixth day. So even, even if we grant JP that account, he's still lying about it. It's not simple to complex. It's kind of mixed up. Um, so yeah, so even about his own Bible, JP is either misinformed it's kind of hard to believe or he's just lying because he knows Christians are ignorant and they don't actually go read. Go read the Bible yourself. Like go look into Genesis and compare these things. Don't take my word for it. Go read it yourself and try to explain it to yourself without like you can go Google, you know, Chris, how Christian apologists explain all these contradictions so that they're not really contradictions. You can go Google that or ask chat JPT or ask your pastor. But what, why don't you use your own fucking brain for just a short time and ask yourself, why is JP lying to me? The real problem with evolution is the third definition. And that's where all the tension lies. And this is called the blind watchmaker thesis. According to the blind watchmaker theory of evolution, the processes that gave rise to living things are totally naturalistic processes, and there was no room for God to do anything. All right, JP is, is lying and word twisting things so much, it's hard to know how to even respond. First of all, there's no such thing as these three categories of evolution, and, and the blind watchmaker is, is a third theory that, need, that has problems. So the theory of evolution encompasses all everything. There's common ancestry, which there's there's no doubt. What what creationists like to call uh, microevolution, where brown bunnies turn into white bunnies, that is evolution. It is the same thing. There's no difference between that and the blind watchmaker, and unless unless you think that that the bunnies are actually willing themselves to turn white. It's a natural process that they're blind to. Now, here's the thing. If you want to posit that God is actively involved in this, well, fine. God, once you, once you posit magic, I don't know why you need to explain anything. It's just magic. God did it. So the whole idea. So this blind watchmaker is based on Richard Dawkins' book, The Blind Watchmaker. And what he basically says in that book is, you don't need a designer, an intelligent designer, to explain what we see in nature. And this is the truth. It's the undisputed truth. There is no argument that it, the statement is true. We don't need a God. Now, there could be a God. And this is, you know, this is why, this is why apologists like, uh, this is why apologists hate Richard Dawkins and why apologists have to come up with this ridiculous, these ridiculous word salads. Look, if God exists, then obviously God used evolution to make stuff that we see. Why? Because the difference between micro and macro evolution is a distinction without a real difference. It's just it's just a thing that creationists like to talk about to try to obfuscate the whole the whole argument. Obviously, there's a difference between a brown bunny changing into white fur from brown fur, fur than growing wings and flying. And evolutionary biologists don't say that, oh, you know, bunnies are hopping around in the field and one of them says, Wow, look at that bird. Wouldn't it be cool to fly? It's not how it freaking works. Nobody says that's how it works. But the process of turning from brown fur to white fur is a natural process that's done by the blind forces of nature. And and the way that the 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 genes for whiteness gets selected that process is the same process that led to birds flying it's just 
to get from a dinosaur to a flying bird takes a lot, lot longer. I mean, you could probably take go to the you could probably go to the pet store. This and this is why creationists like this idea. That where they like to concede this idea. Because you can go to the pet store and buy some brown bunnies. And if the if there's genetic material in them that has some white fur over some generations in your own lifetime, maybe even in a few years since bunnies rapidly pre reproduce, you could have a whole bunch of white bunnies. And we know this because humans breed cats and dogs pretty regularly, as well as other things. And, and you know, we got from wolves to chihuahuas pretty relatively in a relatively short time span. In, in relation to evolutionary time spans over millions and tens of millions and hundreds of millions of years. So evolution, evolution is challenged by creationists because it's a lot harder to conceive and see going from a, a dinosaur to a bird. Like that's harder to visualize than say going from a wolf to a chihuahua. And yes, it, and yes it's different, but it's the same process of how genes select for different traits that, and when they give a survival advantage, they get passed on. That's what the selfish gene. So, like, if if you don't believe this stuff, fine. Or if you want to believe that God did it, you can believe God put this in process and still recognize the science behind why evolution is true. Go read some books. Read Jerry Coyne's Why Evolution Is True. Read uh, Matt Ridley, I think it is the the Red Queen, the Evolution of Sex. Super fascinating. Read read Richard Dawkins. I know you Christians hate Richard Dawkins, but he's he's a very smart evolutionary biologist. Go read his books. If you could actually prove, if anyone could actually prove where all the faults are and prove evolution is impossible, you'd be rich and famous. You'd be hailed by scientists. You'd be you'd probably get a Nobel Prize. You'd be Times Man of the Year. You'd be rich. You'd be in high demand. Knock yourself out. While you're at it, you could also try to prove the Earth is flat and that the sun goes around the Earth because that's your <laughs> that challenge would be about the same. Because guess what? Evolution is true. We don't need to postulate God to explain where life came from. We don't need to postulate that God was involved in this sequence, creating different life forms along the way. That's right, JP. You don't need to postulate that God did it. And guess what? That should be good with you because it increases your faith. Just imagine if you're a Christian and you actually went out and studied this. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, I know, go along with me. I know this is a stretch, that you actually care about truth. You're a Christian and you actually care about truth. I, I know it's a stretch. Go read. Go read Max Tegmar, Sean Carroll, The Quantum Physics. Read. Richard Dawkins and Jerry Coyne and understand and understand how naturalism is perfectly logical and perfectly fits the model that like if we modeled if we modeled naturalism what would we get the universe that we live in now if you're a christian and you do that guess what your faith has has to increase in other words you should be happy to know that JP is completely wrong and a, and a complete idiot you should be happy to know that if you're a Christian. Why? Because the Bible is very specific about that faith is a good thing. So remember when Jesus is touched by Thomas and Thomas says, okay, now I believe. Did Jesus, did Jesus say, you know, like something bad about faith or something good about faith? Now, in my Bible, it says, blessed are those that believe even without being able to touch me. Like Jesus Jesus blesses you more when you have more faith. So, again, if you actually care about truth, go find out why the vast majority of scientists in the field and even a very lot of Christians, and, and I think I'm pretty sure this is standard belief in Catholicism and, and in, in Islam that evolution is true, and a great many of non-fundamentalist Christians believe evolution's true. So if if you can go read these things and understand it, you'll see, hey, the model is it's true and JP is wrong. But that will increase your faith. So it will be a good thing to know the truth. 
Why is the truth scary? It shouldn't be. You should embrace the truth and you shouldn't be afraid of knowing. You shouldn't be afraid of knowing that we don't that we don't have to have the the theory that a God did it to explain the universe and what we see. Now, that doesn't mean that God doesn't exist or that God didn't put it in motion and that God's not responsible. You can still have that belief. You can still you can be like N.T. Wright and say it's obvious reading the parables and reading about Jesus and the character. So N.T. Wright would say, I'm paraphrasing, my Lord and Savior, my Jesus, when I read about him in the Bible, it perfectly aligns with evolution. Like that's how Jesus's character is. There's no conflict for N.T. Wright. And the reason N.T. Wright lands there, I'm assuming, I, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but the reason I'm assuming he lands there is because he actually studied and and the conclusion is obvious. Evolution is true. We 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 can believe that a God used evolution, but we don't it's not necessary. And that should be good news to you because it's faith increasing. It's not faith destroying if you really believe. Avia. Because mutation and natural selection, that is blind processes, the watchmaker who designed us was blind, that means not conscious, not intentional, had no purposes in mind. Why? Because the processes that gave rise to us are purely material, physical processes of mutation or natural selection. It's funny, the only time that JP is not lying or misrepresenting or, you know, yapping his mouth saying stupid shit is when he's, is when he's representing the, his opponent's position. And then, he, and then he actually nails it. That is the blind watchmaker thesis, and that's where the real tension lies. Because that thesis says that the, the, that the common descent of animals from simple to complex took place without any intervention from God creating anything or doing anything during the process. The process is purely naturalistic, and we don't have to postulate a supreme being to explain life. Oh, you know, JP, you're just, a, you're just a liar, and you're a bad liar, and you're a dumb liar. So Richard Dawkins and every other evolutionary biologist and everybody on the planet can't come out and say, this proves that there's no God. And even Dawkins in his own Richard Dawkins scale is like a six point something, like 6.9, right? So yes, I know there's some hard, hard atheists that say, I know for certain there's no God. And... Most of us in this space say, look, there might be a God. There could be. We, we don't have sufficient evidence for us to be convinced, but we're, we're open-minded enough to be convinced if you come up with some good, ev good evidence. What, what J.P. Moreland is trying to communicate to this Christian audience is that the evolutionist is trying to disprove that a God exists by proving how evolution works and that's just bullshit and and how do we know it's bullshit because nt wright just explained earlier that if we believe jesus is the creator then what we see with evolution is what we would expect now you know i think nt wright is just nt wright is just seeding the point that evolution is so well established that it's silly to argue against it so now he's fitting in why that proves Jesus all along because Jesus scattered seeds and some of it, some of the seeds were wasted and some of the seeds flourished. And that's just like evolution. Well, OK, great. But do you see the problem here, JP? You're trying to say you're trying to give a motivation like you're trying to say, oh, those evolutionists, they just want to they just want to prove God doesn't exist. No, that's not even in the fucking question or the argument. Evolution happened. The evidence is overwhelming. Overwhelming. It's a well, well established fact. Now, does that prove there's no God? No. It, do, it proves that we don't need a God. There's a huge difference. Let me repeat that because this seems to be 
something super confusing for Christians. The blind watchmaker and naturalist, naturalism and evolution does not prove that 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 doesn't prove there there's no God. It it can't prove that. It's not trying to prove that. What does it show? It shows that it shows that naturalism and materialism are exceedingly likely to be true, and thus we don't need a God. Right? Do you follow me here? It doesn't mean that there couldn't be a God, but like N.T. Wright, your fellow co-religionist, says evolution is obviously true, so that's what Jesus did. I don't understand why JP or any of you other fundamentalists can't get on board with that. Do you think N.T. Wright is stupid or deceived? Come on, be honest here. The evidence for evolution is just overwhelming. It's a proven fact as much as any other fact in science. So three definitions of evolution. Three pretend things that you just made up just so you can try to make, so you can so you can walk around the stuff that's so obvious, like, like, so you, so you don't have to sound like a flat earther. Microevolution, no big deal. The heliocentric solar system, yeah, no big deal. We'll we'll grant that one. Gravity, yeah, yeah. Oh, we're gonna grant gravity to you too. Common descent, a little bit of a problem there, but at the end of the day, that wouldn't be the end of the world if that turned out to be true. Though I don't think it is. I don't think gravity's true. I mean, it might be true, but I don't think gravity's true. But but you should listen to me as I continue to pontificate about shit I'm completely fucking ignorant about. The real problem is the blind watchmaker thesis that the natural processes of evolution are adequate to explain everything that we see. Now, there is, in my opinion, not a shred of evidence for this thesis. Well, there's not a shred of evidence for the resurrection of Jesus, but you believe that, don't you, JP? There's no evidence. There's no evidence Jesus even existed. None at all. But you still believe in Jesus, right? Now, you see how fucking ridiculous that sounds? Jesus Christ. There's no evidence. There's no evidence for evolution, JP. That's what you're saying. There's, you're, you're granting parts of it. Oh, the microevolution and maybe common ancestry, but the blind watchmaker stuff, there's not a shred of evidence. Now, you know how stupid it sounds if I say there's no evidence when I just said there's no evidence for the resurrection of Jesus. There's no evidence that Jesus even existed. You know how stupid that fucking sounds? You guys want to play this game fairly? Yes, there's evidence that there's a real historical Jesus. In fact, most scholars grant that, even atheists. There's a lot of debate about what things in the Bible Jesus actually said or did. That's a different topic. But even mythicists grant that Jesus likely, or you know, they give some percentage of Jesus might be a real person. Now, on the resurrection... Obviously, I'm an atheist. I don't believe Jesus resurrected from the dead. But I would never say there is no evidence. It's like spitting in the face of Christians. There's no evidence that Jesus rose from the dead. Would I say that? No. The fact that you millions of you believe it and the fact that there's written records, even though I don't agree with the story, that's evidence. So I would never say there's not a shred of evidence any more than I would say there's not a shred of evidence that. Muhammad or Joseph Smith had some revelations and stuff, blah, 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 right? Because for one, it's just ungracious. And for another thing, it's just ignorant. When JP says there's not a shred of evidence, what he's saying is, well, I know that that Jerry Coyne and Richard Dawkins and all these other people have written books and, and provided insurmountable amounts of evidence, but they're all just... Tr- tr- trying to trick you and they're just lying and or they're stupid and everyone who believes in that is just is just stupid i don't go around saying christians are stupid for believing in the resurrection of jesus christ even though i think that it's just a mythical story and i don't think it happened do you get do you get what jp just said there he said that one of the most well-established facts in science 
doesn't have a shred of evidence in his opinion. That's a strong statement. Uh, there is no evidence for this thesis. It's actually not a strong statement, JP. It's an ignorant statement. There's a big difference. All of the evidence in debates are evidence for common dissent, not for the blind watchmaker thesis. And I'm going to give you three reasons why I think it's false. In other words, I'm going to give you three reasons why I believe that God had to be involved in the process and that you cannot explain the living world as we know it without there being a creator intelligent God. Well, even if you prove that, which you can't, all it would, pro all it would prove is there was something we don't understand and it could be a supercomputer AI in the next universe up and we're living in a simulation. It could be a God that's unknown, like Thomas Paine's deist creator God. Might be Allah, and you and me, JP, will be in hell burning forever. Have you thought about that? No, of course, because those Muslims are idiots, right? See how Christianity is. Its, its very basis is exclusivity that leads to bigotry. Christians like to jump to the idea, I've proven that there must be a God. Oh, and it's Jesus. Well, first of all, you haven't proved there must be a God. But let's hear, let, I'm going to try to make this quick. Let's hear what his arguments are. We already know they're going to be stupid. You understand my, where, I'm, where we're headed? Yes, the babbling of an idiot. All right. Now, before I do, there are many lines of evidence I could have selected. Did you hear what he just said? There's many lines of evidence that I could have selected to dispute this thing that I don't believe in because I just got done saying there's not a shred of evidence for it. Hmm. Okay, let's rewind that a minute. Just a second ago, JP said there is not a shred of evidence for this theory. Now, there is, in my opinion, not a shred of evidence for this thesis. Then he goes on to say, there's many lines of evidence I could have, that I could bring up to refute. Now, before I do, there are many lines of evidence I could have selected. There are many lines. Many lines of evidence. That's what he just said. But I'm at a, I'm at a pick just a couple of them to show how smart I am, even though I, I, I just contradicted my own self in like less than a minute. Let me give you those three things. All righty, folks, I'm going to end this. I just deleted about 40 minutes of me and JP pontificating about shit. I, I want to be gracious to JP here. When he says he's going to give many lines of evidence, what he means is he's got many lines of evidence of why the stuff that has not a shred of evidence is wrong. So you might, as a Christian, you might say, oh, well, JP didn't mean he didn't have evidence. He meant you didn't have an evidence. But if you have evidence against something, there must be some evidence that you're trying to refute or it would be pointless. Does that make sense? Like, like, it's like if I said, oh, I have tons of evidence that, that you know, fairies don't exist. Well, how, I mean, how do you have evidence that fairies don't exist if you don't have some evidence that fairies do exist, unless you're just talking in general? It, you know, in, in other words, the conversation just becomes nonsensical. Like, you know, there's some things that are unfalsifiable. Like, there might be fairies in another planet, in another galaxy, in another solar system that can do magic. Uh, it doesn't seem like it based on what we see here on this planet, but there, you know, it's a, like it's an unfalsifiable thing. There might be another universe with fairies. I mean, there might be another universe in which Jesus actually saves. There might be another universe where all is God. Who know, Who knows? There's a lot of might, might, maybe, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to end this video with just, I'm just going to say the, just in a nutshell, JP is going to bring up uh, the origins, like how mathematically it's impossible for, for, origin of life. Okay, that's a non sequitur to the argument about natural selection, um, bringing about speciation and blah, blah, blah. Like, it's a different field and it's a different argument. And even if you, even if you were to prove that, 
that life, the spark of life on Earth happened magically through supernatural means, that that wouldn't have anything to say about um, evolution evolution through natural selection. Just like we heard from N.T. Wright, that's how Jesus did it. So it's it's a non sequitur. You want to have that? Go listen to James Tour ramble like a rabid dog, and you can believe that origin of life research is stupid and blah 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 blah. It's another topic. Then, then I think he's going to bring up, he's going to bring, well, I know for a fact he's going to bring up irreducibly, irreducible complexity, and he's going to blah, blah, blah. Now, here's the thing. If you're a Christian and you want to know the truth and you care about the truth, if you listen to JP, who's not an expert in the field, like he did, he's, he doesn't have a PhD in evolutionary biology. He doesn't know what he's talking about. So, if you care about truth, and I might be wrong, I'll tell you right now, I'm not an expert. I'm listening to experts and I'm weighing, I'm weighing what sounds most reasonable. I'm looking at consensus, although majorities can be wrong in general, in, in hard established sciences, usually the consensus among all the experts tends to be closest to the truth as opposed to a fringe scientist who says, no, everybody else is wrong. It doesn't mean the fringe guy can't be like Galileo turned out to be right. But like those situations don't happen as often as, as, you know, I guess creationists wish they would happen. Like, so irreducible complexity instead of like, if you care about this, I'm not going to try to explain it. You can go out there and research it yourself. It doesn't prove that it's impossible because there's plenty of examples where that show that the the quote evidence that people like JP spout off is nonsense because it's you can all you need is one counter example and they exist more than one exists but at least one exists and you can go read about the counter example and then as soon as you understand the counter example proves that their quote evidence is bullshit then that's off the plate then you don't get to use that anymore right if i say Black swans don't exist. And then we go and we find a black swan. Okay, that's where the term black swan came from. But like it just takes one. Oh, fuck. Black swans exist. I guess my theory that all swans are white is wrong. Then I don't get to keep saying all swans are white. And that's what JP's doing. JP's saying all swans are white. Never, never mind that black swan that we found. Never mind that. JP, irreducible complexity. Off the table. It's we already know this. Uh, go read the Dover trial. Michael Bayhead came across as a complete babbling idiot, and a conservative Republican judge said, "ID, you know, creationism is a religion, and it can't be taught in schools." Was he a? Was he? You know, he wasn't a liberal atheist. He was a conservative church-going Republican. So, why did this conservative church-going Republican, you know? say this is pseudoscience it's not real it's religious why did he do that go read it if you care about truth go read it and if you want to listen to guys like jp that's fine listen to ken ham i don't care but what i'm trying to say is if you care about truth and you and you can't steal man the other side then you don't care about truth and jp moreland is not only a buffoon he is a liar so if you listen to people like J.P. Moreland and you stop, then you're not going to know. You're, it's impossible to know the truth that way. It's impossible to listen to people, even even if J.P. was telling the truth, which he's not. But even if he was telling the truth and he was correct, you wouldn't know that by just listening to J.P. The same way if I told you, memorize this, seven times seven equals 49 and the square root of 49 is seven now memorize that and repeat it back to me oh you're a mathematician you know math no you just memorize something you you don't know it's true because you don't understand it now if you go and take math courses and you understand the function so that if i say to you hey what's the square root of 1729 and and you can do the math and show me and figure it out. Oh, now you understand math and now and now 
you can, if somebody comes along and says the square root of 81 is six, you can say, no, I know that's not true. And here's why. And you can do the math. So if you want to believe in JP's pseudoscience nonsensical bullshit, okay, fine. But if you can't steal man the other side, you're just an ideologue parroting nonsense. You're not actually smart. You're not actually informed. And you're not actually showing that you care about truth. All right. I've gone too long. I'm sorry. Well, not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. But I did. I cut out about 40 minutes because I didn't want to go back and forth talking about irreducibly irreducible complexity. If you care about that, go read experts about it. Don't, you know, you don't need to hear me tell you why JP's an idiot. Go read actual experts. Go read experts in the field. Do that for everything that you want to know the truth about, and you'll be a smarter person. That's my advice. Have a good day. Ha, 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 ha.